I'm standing in our virtual studio next to a digital replica of San Francisco's landmark ferry building. In a minute, we'll dive into the details of this daring plan to raise it by seven feet. But first, let me tell you what's at stake. The ferry building serves as a gateway to the city and financial district, as well as a gathering point for the community. The structure is built above water and located along the Embarcadero. It is home to six ferry piers, which are used by millions each year. Inside, a marketplace that features dozens of different shops and restaurants, as well as a famous farmer's market on the outside. On the upper two floors, you might not know, 190,000 square feet of office and meeting spaces. This landmark has dodged some big disasters. The question, will it survive climate change? The San Francisco Ferry Building has graced the Embarcadero waterfront for 125 years. It survived two major earthquakes, the Great Quake of 1906, and then once again in 1989 after Loma Prieta. The enormous building stretches 660 feet in length. The most recognizable feature, the 245-foot tall clock tower. It's a building that houses an old immaculate condition tower clock that we sort of treasure. Dorian Clare is one of only a handful of people allowed inside the tower. Along with his assistant, Max, he keeps the original clock in tip-top shape. My responsibility is to keep the clock running and keep it on time. But according to a major report on climate change, time is running out. The dangers of floods, Famine and fires are mounting rapidly as global temperatures continue to rise. And the ferry building is under threat from rising sea levels and extreme weather. Uh, we're already seeing flooding on the Embarcadero. We know the bay is rising. We know it will continue to rise. Elaine Forbes is director of the Port of San Francisco. According to the port, by the end of the century, the sea level along the shoreline is expected to rise anywhere from three to seven feet. We must prepare this waterfront for the next generation. Port officials are already drawing up plans and strategies to strengthen and adapt the waterfront against both seismic threats and sea level rise. We know it's magical and beautiful, but what specifically really matters and how do we prioritize what matters? The port held a series of public meetings. Without a doubt, those who live and work around the Embarcadero want to see the ferry building remain intact, functioning, and on site. That gave birth to this audacious plan. We are working with the Army Corps to say, we want to save the ferry building. Uh, we want the building to be here for the next generation. And so that would mean raising the building. Raising the building by as much as seven feet. Dorian believes that's time well spent. I absolutely vote yes, raise the ferry building. It saves my favorite clock tower, but it's a wonderful building. It's definitely worth raising. So how do we save a historic ferry building? Well, here we are in our virtual reality set, and I'm joined by the engineer of the Port of San Francisco, Steve Real. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. At you. the port, virtually, how do we raise a ferry building that's what, 25,000 tons? Slowly and carefully. Yes. Uh, the first thing we have to do is get the water out. So we install a temporary coffer dam around the perimeter. You can see, okay. And then pump the water and the mud out that's settled in over the last century. Now you can see the foundation. We install hydraulic jacks. How many? Two to 300 hydraulic jacks for the computer control system. We cut the piers and start lifting the building very slowly. Once it's raised, we install pier extensions, take the jacks out, pump the water back in, and then remove the coffer dam. And how much water are we talking about? How many feet? The projections are up to seven feet of sea level rise over the next century. Okay. Now, let's talk about just the project in itself. I've never seen a building lifted, let alone over the water. Is this a first? It's a first for over the water. It certainly is. Oh my, and so we'll then come down to the entire pier as well? Yes, the entire waterfront's going to need to come up. San Francisco wants to be the city by the bay, not in it. 
So we have to take care of it now. But we should say this is the planning stages. So when will this actually take place? We're about a decade away from this project. Okay, and then the lift is how long? Once the jacks are in place, about two to three months. I cannot mm -hmm. imagine. So now, as we see the ferry building today, how will it look when this project's complete? Will it look different or will it look the same to our, to our eyes? Well, it'll look the same. That's the beauty of it. It's preserved for the next generation in its location over the bay. So are there plans in the works to change some of the things, to add something, maybe to the basement? That's a possibility. <laughs> Possibly. Once you have the water out and are underneath, that's, that's certainly a possibility. All right, so let's talk about the price tag. I know the Army Corps of Engineers is picking up some of the tab. How much does something like this cost? Waterfront-wide, the cost is in the billions, and the Army Corps of Engineers can pay up to 65%. All right, so our virtual reality set showed pretty much how it's going to go down that's or right. up for the water. That's right. <laughs> All right, Steve, thank you so much. Are you excited about a project like this? We need our engineer happy. I'm thrilled, I'm You're thrilled. Th okay, thank you for joining us and we look forward to seeing how it all comes together. Thanks for having me. Thanks. We've included much more information on our website. In the story, you'll find links to reports that go in depth on the future risks to the waterfront and the port's strategies on how to defend it. Or if you want to take an even closer look at the virtual demonstration we just did, we've also posted it on KPIX.com.